Kyle, the Rolling Meeple. Hi, this is Katrina. I'm the Panda Meeple. Today we have a top five for you. This is our top five short games that you can play for in, in under an hour. You want to start? Okay, so we'll be going from our five, number five, to our number one. So my number five is Code Names. And uh, Code Names, the original one, is a game that you can play in teams. And the whole idea is that you're spies and you're trying to find another spy without letting um, regular people know that you're a spy by using code words. Um, I like this game because it's a great icebreaker for people um, that aren't necessarily familiar with games. It's really easy to learn. And uh, when you're getting to know people, it's a great way to kind of see how their mind thinks. And then when you do know people that you're playing with, it's kind of funny to see what words they associate. Um, the complexity is pretty easy. Uh, and um, as far as gameplay, it goes pretty quick. So that's my number five. My number five is a game called Dead Man's Draw. Uh, this is a pressure luck game. You have to pl collect sets. Um, you draw cards one, one, one at a time off the top of the deck. And if you ever draw the same card of, a, of another of an one you already, you already have out for that turn, you lose all the cards you have uh, and have to put them back in, in, the, in the discard pile. And then at the end of the game, or each card has a particular power for it. Like um, one, one of them will force you to draw the next two cards in the deck. Now, if you draw that one later on in your turn, it's more likely you'll get a double and have to lose everything you, you, did, you did. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins the game. I think it's really short, really easy to learn uh, game that's really fun. Uh, yeah, I like that game too. It's on my list, but it's not number uh, four. So number four for me is Tapanoko. And the first reason I love it is because it's about pandas. So, um, the whole idea behind Takanoko is that you are, um, in a garden and, uh, there happens to be a panda in the garden who really likes to eat all the bamboo that you're growing. And there's also a gardener that wants to stop the panda from eating and grow a beautiful garden. And so you, there's a couple of different strategies, which is what I like about the game is, um, it's a tile laying game and, uh, there's basically three different strategies you can do. You can either get points from, uh, laying certain tiles in certain orders, collecting, um, bamboo as the panda when he eats it or growing a number of bamboo, uh, when you're doing the gardener, um, as one of your strategies. So it's pretty neat. Uh, every game is different as far as what helps you win, um, and the art is adorable. Um, we haven't played the Chibi one yet, um, the expansion to it yet, but it looks really cute. I mean, there's baby pandas, basically, in the game as an update. And, um, and a mama panda. And a mama panda. Well, obviously, there's babies. Um, but it looks really adorable, so I'm looking forward to, to playing that one as well. But... Regular Tapanoko, adorable little like panda figurine. It's great. So that's my number four. My number four is a game called Flux. Now there's a bunch of different versions of this game. The, the one that, we'll, that you'll see up on on the screen is Space Flux, or Star Flux. Sorry, it's Flux is a game where you the game starts out where you just all you do is draw one card and play one card, but every card you play can and probably will change the rules. The games are constantly in flux, hence the name flux. But and then the goals will the goal of the game will change throughout the game. And it's just a silly little game. It always brings us to hysterics when we're playing. And there's a, there's multiple different ones. There's space flux, there's ones for chemistry, there's ones for Firefly. A, a Firefly one, Adventure Time. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different ones. There's two new ones that I'm excited about. Uh, based on Star Trek, so I'm a big Trekkie, so I'm really looking to pick a nose up when they come out. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just a silly little game. It's really fun to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so number three, uh, my number three was actually Dead Man's Draw, which is the one that Kyle mentioned earlier. Um, what I like about the game is it's pretty balanced as far as um, who could win the game. It really, uh, anything can change the game because it's, there's a lot of luck involved in it uh, because it is pressure luck. And um, 
it's uh, there's a little bit of take that in it, but it's not a whole lot. So you might leave a little irritated with your person that you're playing with, but not like <laughs> over the top mad at them. Um, so that part is pretty fun too. So that's why it's my number three. My number three is a game that we picked up through Kickstarter called Ursa Minor. Um, Ursa Minor, you're playing um, a bear. You take control of a bear, and you are mining for honey. Um, and it's a tile laying, our tile laying game, tile flipping. You control your your bear to can go around to different tiles and flip them over for uh, different points. Um, we haven't played it a whole lot, but it does look like a, like it's a really fun game. It does, and it plays really quick once you get it all set up. Mm -hmm. um, the art's pretty cute in that one too. That yeah, one didn't yeah. make my top five, but I do love that. Game. The art is really cute on that one, and that's one reason why we picked it up on Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. So number two, uh, my number two is Lamb Turns, um, and uh, we've only played a couple of times, maybe once or twice with the expansion for it, which we just got, but um, the base game by itself is awesome. So Lamb Turns is uh, also a tile laying game, but other or different than um, Takunoko, uh, Lamb Turns has a little bit more of a puzzly feel to it because um, you are basically matching colors of lanterns um, that you're placing in the lake for the emperor's um, the emperor's like, party or something like that. Yeah, and so you want to make the most beautiful display of lanterns that you can for the emperor, so you're matching uh, colors on uh, hex tiles. And so um, it's a really quick playing game. It's really easy to teach, which is really nice for new um players. Um, for example, we played with a couple of friends and her daughter um, was able to play and she's pretty young. So um, like four. yeah, so it's pretty nice uh, to see that it's a pretty good game for kids. Um, obviously, kids aren't going to get all of the um, the gameplay behind it as far as like strategy and stuff like that. But if you're just teaching kids how to do colors, uh, matching colors and stuff like that, it's a great game for that. They can help you with that part of it. So it's really nice that that part of the game is really nice. Um, and, uh, the expansions add some really nice, uh, things to it, some really nice, uh, different strategies. So hopefully we'll come out with a, a game for, or a playthrough for that for you guys soon. Cause that's one of my, one of my favorites. So that's we number do have two. one, we do have one re recorded. We will put it up as soon as we can, and then we will link to it in the, in the description down below. Yeah. Yeah. That one's, that one's really good. My number two is a game called Splendor. This is a set collecting game where you are um, gem merchants trying to collect gems to win nobles to your favor. Um, you have a, a set a, a tableau of gems that you were try you're trying to collect using gems the other gems that you you have each turn you just grab a, grab some gems and then you can start collecting from the tableau, building up your own, and then once you have enough, one of the nobles will come to you, seeing as you have what they need. And it's a race to 15 points for who won. We have excuse for this one as well. Um, we will might, might be doing a playthrough of that one later. So look for that. Yeah, the expansion adds some pretty cool stuff. Um, there's a lot of different gameplay. The, the base game's pretty simple. Um, so it's, it's really nice, easy to learn, but the expansion adds some really complicated, um, tactics and things like that, but you can add to it. So it's pretty nice, but fortunately that didn't make my list either. <laughs> uh, so my number one, we've already talked about, but my number one was flux because I, no matter how many times we play that game, it is still fun to play it changes every time. Um, I especially like the Star Flux just because of all the sci-fi references. So, I mean, if you're a fan of sci-fi, I would definitely recommend to pick it up uh, if you're going to start out on any of the Fluxes, just because it has references to Firefly and Star Trek. Um, and Star Wars. Yeah, Star there, Wars. There's a card on there that says, That's No Moon. Yeah, yeah. And I think even Doctor Who, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's some Doctor Who cards in there. Um, so it's pretty, it's just fun to kind of you know, see the Easter egg kind of cards in there. And also the fact that it's changing all the time. I mean, some people don't like that, but I think it's hilarious when you could be like, yes, I'm going to win next turn. And then someone puts out a new goal 
and you're like, oh, dang it. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's really fun. And also, a game could take anywhere from like five minutes to, you know, half an hour, depending on what cards come out, which is pretty funny as well. And it's funny to see somebody go from playing one card in their hand and, and, they, all, and they have five more cards in their hand and, you, and they're able to play their entire hand because of the... Yeah. The rules change. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty neat. So that's definitely my number one for short games. My number one, she's already mentioned, it was her number two. My number one is Lanterns. It's just a really fun tile lane, mat, you, and you match colors. Um, like, like you said, trying to collect favor for, mm -hmm. for the, from the Emperor um, to get points. Um, you'll, you'll get Lantern cards, which gives you sets of cards to turn in. So it's just a really fun plays in about forty minutes, depending on how who you're playing yeah. with. Um, but again, that's one that, that will that, that we have all the games we mentioned. We will link down to to Board Game Geek in the, in the description below, so you guys can go check them out, find out where they're at. Um, most of them you can probably find on Amazon. Yeah, but they are really good games. Highly recommended that you you would uh. Pick them up if you're looking to get into mm -hmm. board games. Most of them are really easy to learn. Yeah, they're pretty easy to start with. So if you're new to the probably hobby, the probably the, the most complex one that we mentioned today was was Ursa Minor. Yeah. But other than that, these other all these other ones are really easy to learn. So from now, this is this is Kyle, aka the Rolling Meeple. This is Katrina, aka Panda Meeple. Take care. We'll see you later.